Liberals sometimes get offended when leftists joke about how it seems like liberals hate socialists more than they hate fascists. And, you know, usually when leftists say this, they're being facetious or half serious. But there is some merit to that claim because the World Values Survey actually finds that centrists, not socialists or far-right extremists, are the most hostile towards democracy. And when you consider the fact that the Democratic Party was literally willing to destroy their own party to stop a socialist from winning the 2020 Democratic Party primary, I mean, this is why leftists say that. And it's not like Bernie Sanders was a real socialist. He was a social democrat, which means that he was a capitalist who wanted to kind of soften the edges of our capitalist system and offer more social programs. Maybe give workers a little bit of the wealth that the owner class has. Uh, but we have even more evidence to confirm that maybe it is the case that liberals hate socialists more than fascists. Because in a new book by Jonathan Allen and Amy Parnes titled Lucky, How Joe Biden Barely Won the Presidency, they explain how centrists were actually contemplating what would be worse, a second Trump term or a Sanders presidency? I repeat, Democratic Party elites didn't know. They were literally torn between Trump having another four years and Bernie Sanders having four years as president. So obviously we can't read the entire book, but I do want to point you towards a book review done by Bronco Marcetic for Jacobin. Uh, we're going to read what he has to say because he gives us some key details and quotes that absolutely stood out to me for obvious reasons. Quote, many unnerved Democratic establishment centrists weren't sure what they would do if it came down to Trump and Sanders in a general election, write Parnes and Allen. Founded or not, their fears of losing their party to socialism competed with their fears of Trump winning a second term. This is not going to be the party of Bernie, Bill Clinton told DNC Chair Tom Perez in 2017 about what mattered most in the following four years, we learn. 30 House Democrats considered backing Mike Bloomberg at the prospect of of the worst case scenario of Sanders winning the nomination, the authors write, scared equally that Sanders would lose to Trump and that he would beat him and transform the party. And while Barack Obama was open-minded about the primary contest, we're told he didn't want Bernie Sanders to win and he didn't think Joe Biden would be a good candidate. Obama's thinly veiled doubts about Biden's ability to carry the ball over the end line without fumbling, as one-time rival Cory Booker put it, was widely shared. Despite his poll numbers and self-confidence, the former former vice president was humiliatingly rebuffed by party elites and top staffers who didn't believe he could win. As he limped into Iowa, much of the Democratic Party's elite had already given up on him or was in the process of doing so, the authors report. Alarmed by the diminished figure they watched make all the wrong headlines in public event after event, various corporate Democrats weighed launching their own 11th hour challenges to Sanders, Deval Patrick, John Kerry, even Hillary Clinton. By late February, Biden had posted embarrassing finishes in the first two contests, ran out of money, and in a detail that would be too on the nose if it were fiction, the power went out at his hotel and the wheels on his bus suffered a mishap. That Biden would end up the party nominee regardless was the product of several factors out of his control. And of course, there were Obama's calls to Biden's rivals that consolidated the field against Sanders, which the authors recount in greater detail than any previous account, like Mr. Magoo stepping on a sewer lid or a construction beam at just the right moment, Biden was propped up and rescued by a series of twists of fate he'd barely noticed and came out of the other side convinced it had all been his doing. So do you remember when all throughout the Democratic Party primary in 2020, we heard nothing but electability, electability. Joe Biden's the most electable. The media pushed it, and Bronco makes that point as well in the article. Even Joe Biden's wife basically said, look, I know that you don't like my husband's health care policies, but really you should be thinking about who can beat Donald Trump. We heard all of this nonsense about electability, and it turned out that they happened to be correct. But behind the scenes, nobody in the Democratic Party establishment actually believed that Joe Biden was capable of beating Donald Trump. And this one quote from a longtime Biden advisor, it was really fascinating. Uh, he said, quote, if President Trump had just acknowledged there was a virus, even midway in August or September, acknowledged this is a fucked up situation and pivoted, we would have gotten crushed. This is a Joe Biden advisor, a longtime Joe Biden advisor saying this, that they knew 
Joe Biden was not the strongest candidate. Now, we can't go back in time and try a different scenario where we run Bernie Sanders against Donald Trump. But the point is that while they were telling us one thing, they believed something entirely different. They believed what was obvious, that Joe Biden was not an inspirational candidate. He was similar to Hillary Clinton four years prior, who didn't really have a message. They had to find a justification for his campaign to begin with because it seemed like he was just running because he wanted more power and not because he actually wanted to support America and change the country for the better. Um, and, and I've got to say, this isn't necessarily surprising. The revelations from this book, I think, are less shocking than the revelations from the last book that uh, Amy Parnes put out, which was Shattered. But still, the fact that we now have concrete proof, or at least, you know, um, anecdotal evidence, um, that Democrats were confused or, or at least uh, torn between Bernie and Trump, it would have been really, really interesting to see what would have happened if Bernie Sanders became the Democratic Party nominee. Would he have beat Donald Trump? I absolutely am confident that he would have defeated Donald Trump handily. Um, but to see some pundits in mainstream media who claimed that, you know, they didn't support Bernie or we shouldn't support Bernie because he couldn't beat Trump, like to watch them pivot and support Donald Trump in lieu of Bernie Sanders because they are more afraid of socialism than fascism, that would have been a, a very important mask off moment. And I feel like we're going to get that mask off moment from Democratic Party elites sometime, like they're going to show their cards. I think it's obvious, like leftists already see it, but we need normal Americans to see it, right? We need the normies to understand that the party never really cared about electability. They didn't even believe the bullshit that they were espousing. They cared about stopping Bernie Sanders. That was the real primary. It was Bernie Sanders versus any and everyone else. And in this article, Bronco actually goes a little bit deeper into how specifically the book talks about how elites killed off Bernie Sanders campaign. Obama jumped in, of course, at the last minute to um, make the field consolidate in favor of Joe Biden. The DNC then used the pandemic to effectively end the primary and the DNC even threatened to cut states pledge delegates in half if they chose to delay their elections. I mean, it just goes to show you how corrupt the Democratic Party is. And how the individuals who have power absolutely do not want to give it up. So that is the main takeaway. When we say that liberals seem to hate socialists more than fascists, it's because of revelations like this. They literally didn't know who they'd choose, who they'd support if it came down to Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump. Imagine being liberal and even for a minute questioning who's the better candidate. It is absolutely outrageous, and I really want them to name names. Like, I want to know specifically which Democratic Party officials didn't know if they'd support Donald Trump over Bernie Sanders or not. Like, I want to know, because these individuals obviously should not be nowhere near the levers of power, because they are just morally bankrupt and very clearly are only interested in their own careers and maintaining the status quo. And that is uh, morally bankrupt, to say the least. You know, you, you, you know, you know, the, you know, the thing, thing. you're getting nervous, man, man. man.